I am a sports medicine doctor. I am the team physician for Siena College and uh, that involves multiple sports, men and women. Uh, we cover contact sports such as lacrosse and soccer, basketball and um, that's a part of our practice. We also see a lot of uh, high school and younger athletes who uh, come in for either musculoskeletal problems or head injuries. Head injuries has been something that we've been uh, very involved with and have a sports concussion clinic here and uh, that's been going for over 10 years. Uh, it's multidisciplinary and um, we've uh, recently been working on some research looking at uh, how well uh, that process works. Um, I also teach in the medical school. I'm an associate professor and teach the musculoskeletal course for Albany Medical College. So post-concussion syndrome is a syndrome where there is, there's been a head injury, first of all, and the head injury has resulted in symptoms that have been protracted, uh, haven't resolved within a uh, week or two. Most head injuries or concussions uh, are milder injuries that do recover f quickly from, but in post-concussion syndrome there's a longer recovery period. Uh, one of the definitions out there is for a three-month minimum um, for a recovery. So that's essentially the, uh, um, the component of having had a head injury, having a longer recovery, and also some people feel uh, having some cognitive and mood component to uh, symptoms that patients experience. There's ongoing research to determine who's most at risk. There's probably some genetic component to it. However, what we know at this time is that some um, characteristics make you more likely to have a protracted recovery. Certainly more severe injuries where you're injured with a higher velocity, uh, motor vehicle accidents, for instance, falls from buildings, um, skiing, snowboarding, higher velocity injuries. Also, people that have um, other what we call comorbidities, so people that have pre-existing anxiety disorders or uh, attention disorders, uh, they have learning difficulties. Those patients are more prone to having prolonged recoveries. And then finally, people that have had not just one head injury, but a number of head injuries. Um, if you've had two or three head injuries, you're more likely to have a protracted recovery. You know, the question of when can we say someone has a post-concussion syndrome is difficult. Uh, the um, most recent consensus among sports physicians involved in head injuries was in Berlin in 2016. And um, that meeting basically described how it may take up to a month for most people to recover from a head injury rather than a week or two, um, particularly kids. So um, perhaps, uh, you know, having symptoms for a month is to be expected. So a post-concussion syndrome would therefore require you to have longer than a month's recovery. Some people still feel like it's more of a three-month recovery that would qualify as a post-concussion syndrome. Uh, but, uh, you know, anything protracted beyond a month, I think, probably meets the criteria. Symptoms are, are, are very varied, and that's one of the difficulties with uh, recognition of concussion and head injuries. Um, headaches are certainly common, dizziness. Uh, but also difficulty concentrating, difficulty uh, focusing. Often people are sensitive to light and have a difficult time looking at computer screens. Uh, sleep abnormalities, um, you know, having difficulty going to sleep, having difficulty getting good quality sleep. Some people sleep more than usual and just want to sleep all day. Um, all of these things can happen. So it's not, um, it's not easy to necessarily uh, come up with a you know, a, a good example of a concussion because there are so many different ways it can present and some people don't get symptoms until a couple of days after they've had their head injury so that makes it more, even more challenging. We try and put um, symptoms into realms so uh, some people have more uh, physical characteristic uh, symptoms such as headaches. Other people have more what we call vestibular or balance related uh, symptoms such as dizziness and um, you know difficulty with their balance. And other people have more cognitive um, effects like uh, difficulty concentrating, um, feeling mentally foggy, these types of symptoms. Um, and then you know there are other uh, 
that other, other people have more mood um, symptoms such as irritability, actually becoming depressed, uh, you know, emotional. These are the sort of symptoms they'll have. So, you know, whether um, concussion is accepted by uh, the public in general is, uh, is a good question. Um, I think there has been sufficient education over the last 10, 15 years that there is a, a, a better groundswell of understanding about concussion. So I think um, it's not just the uh, immediate sporting community that understands, it's th there is better understanding amongst teachers. There's obviously been um, almost six years of mandatory education for teachers within the New York State school system. So that's really helped. Um, but, you know, there's still a, uh, a wider uh, audience of, um, of people that may not have understood uh, how concussion um, appears. And the difficulty for patients is that they haven't got a set of crutches, they haven't got a cast on, they don't have a, an easily identifiable uh, cue to the fact that they've been injured. And um, too often that results in people minimising their injury and not understanding how profoundly it affects them. So the, the recovery process from concussions uh, is a research interest of ours. We've been looking at uh, various ways of tracking recovery and uh, I think the number one thing to say about that is it's quite important to do that with multiple uh, modalities and multiple tools because there's not one defining tool. Um, there are various ways of tracking recovery. Probably the two more established ways are following balance, which um, you can certainly follow people's balance clinically, seeing how well they can kind of keep their posture, eyes open, eyes closed, um, both legs on a single leg or, or even in uh, what we call tandem stance where you have one foot in front of the other. Um, we've developed a way of quantifying that with a system called Equilibrate, um, which is uh, a device developed by Balance Engineering out of Rochester, New York, and it quantifies how well people balance. It looks at their, um, their center of mass and their uh, amount of sway, and it's a little more uh, sensitive than the naked eye, determining how well people are balancing. Additionally, we've been using a program called IMPACT, which is a uh, neurocognitive program uh, which tests various neuropsychological elements, reaction time, processing speed, memory, and uh, that's been fairly widespread use uh, of that system within the USA and, and globally, honestly, um, for 15, 20 years. Um, that is a system that takes uh, you know, about 25, 30 minutes to uh, complete a test. And uh, if you can compare that to a baseline test, it can really kind of give you some good information about how close to being recovered someone is. Unfortunately, not everyone has a baseline test to compare to. So um, we are often uh, having to compare uh, people's scores to establish norm values rather than a baseline. Um, but for instance, for all the Siena College athletes that I care for, all of them have a baseline test at entry to, to college as a freshman, and um, many of the area high schools do the same thing. So a tip bit of information for um, anyone that hasn't, um, actually that's been hiding under a rock and hasn't heard about concussion. Um, concussion is say, uh, you know, it's a, an injury that affects the brain. We only have one brain, so it's important that it's recognized. Uh, if you can recognize that someone may have had a concussion, then making sure that they see a doctor who's familiar with that type of injury is very important because it helps us to uh, allow them to begin the recovery and it prevents them from getting another head injury, which is really the number one aim for uh, us that are the you know, medical profession involved in people with concussions because if you have a second head injury while recovering from a first, that can lead to very serious consequences, post-concussion syndrome certainly, but also something called second impact syndrome, which is a, uh, an injury that's compounded by a second injury, resulting in the uh, brain swelling rapidly, and people die from that. So 
that's a very serious injury and something that's very important that we, uh, we recognise and prevent.